Hey you guys, this is part four of my little ticket collection video and I'm going to start it off with the last two films in the Saw series before part six comes out. In my other videos I talked about um, the Saw movies. Of course I have movies from all of them except the first Saw film. Saw 2 and Saw 3 and now I'm going to talk about the next two installments of the Saw series. That would be Saw 4 in 2007 and Saw 5, which came out last year in 2008. Saw 4 takes the series into another direction. Of course, Jigsaw, who got killed in the last installment, and Amanda, Jigsaw's apprentice, played by Shawnee Smith, who also was killed in the last installment. Um, this one sees Jigsaw laid out on an autopsy table, and the doctor's just cutting him open and he finds a little tape in his stomach and we find out why Jigsaw put little wax on that tape in the last installment. In this one they, it shows that he swallowed the tape. He swallowed the tape, sorry, for whoever cuts him open to find it. And he said and he basically says on that tape the games are far from over. And then the story shifts to a commander rig, played by Lyric Bent, who had a role in the second and third Saw films, and he plays a major role in this particular installment of the Saw series, uh, where he's being tested by Jigsaw himself, going through all these victims to see what he sees. Um, Donnie Wahlberg, who plays Detective Eric Matthews from Saw 2 and Saw 3, returns for this installment as well, and he plays another prominent role in this sequel. And... And I'm sorry for anybody who hasn't seen the Saw films yet, I apologize in advance, but this is, but this particular sequel is where we find out that um, Detective Hoffman, played by Costas Mandalore, whose character was introduced in Saw 3, this is the film where we, where we find out that he is the new Jigsaw apprentice. And that storyline carries on into Saw 4 where we actually get to see um, how Jigsaw got to Hoffman and why he became the new apprentice. All while there are five new victims in the little Jigsaw game who, are, who themselves are being tested. And of course, uh, Agent Peter Strom, played by Scott Patterson, who was introduced in Saw 4, comes back for this film, has a little cat-mouse game between him and Hoffman which leads to uh, one shocking ending, which sets the stage for Saw 6, which comes out this year. Um, like I mentioned before, all the Saw films, I like them very much. Um, I don't see why they get so much crap. Um, they're obviously good since they make so much money. Um, I can see why all the Saw films make so much money and why they're so popular. Just the consistency, um, casting-wise and story um, how the producers get most of all the original actors in like either small roles or cameo roles in the film. That's the one thing I like about this film very much. Um, and I think that's the key to the series, the series' success, in my opinion. And I can't wait for Saw 6. And that's all I have to say about the Saw films. And now I'm going to move on to a few films I saw in uh, 2007. This one I'm very proud to have seen in the theater. Of course, Tarantino and Rodriguez double feature. Oh yes, Grindhouse. Saw this um, on the 22nd of April. Um, it was a 210 show. Love that. I'm surprised this didn't make so much money as it did. Um, this was, it was a very good experience. Planet Terror, Death Proof, and all the fake trailers in between. Machete, Thanksgiving, Werewolf Women of the SS, and Don't. Uh, me personally, I like a uh, Planet Terror more than I do Death Proof. Death Proof was it was okay, it was enjoyable, but I put Planet Terror a few notches up way before um, Death Proof because I like Planet Terror more. So Grindhouse was a pretty good experience. Um, I can't wait for the complete set that comes out later on this year. I'll be getting that hopefully. Another movie I have is one that is absolutely badass, and that is. Death Sentence. This is the third film from James Wan, the director of the first Saw film and uh, Dead Silence. And this stars Kevin Bacon as a, like a normal insurance worker. 
whose son gets brutally murdered in a gang initiation, and when the justice system fails him, he decides to take the law into his own hand, law into his own hands. I'm sorry, and wages a war with the bad guys responsible. Very dark, very gritty, very brutal. Um, I have this on DVD. I watch it every now and then. It's just so well made. The performances are so great, especially Kevin Bacon's. Um, all in all, great film, Death Sentence. I recommend this to anybody. Just see it. Um, rent it, see it, um, do whatever you can to see it. This is just such a great film, Death Sentence. And here's another film I saw around the holiday season, and that's Alexandra Aja and Gregory Lavasseur's P2, which stars uh, Rachel Nichols and Wes Bentley. Um, Rachel Nichols stars as... Um, as a business employee um, who gets trapped on Christmas Eve by this really crazy security guard who's been obsessed with her and he just snaps and just starts killing the, her co-workers because he's so obsessed with her. Very good film, very good in the spirit of a uh, high tension and a movie that I haven't seen yet and that is The Hills Have Eyes. That's one I want to see but I have seen Mirrors though, Mirrors awesome film um gregory lavisor and alex aja the of course the producing writing and directing team they're they're golden together can't wait for piranha 3d to come out they're just all around great guys so actually i saw this with my mom um when it came out um we want to see another movie at that time but i suggested to her we see this because this was just so unique um uh, sadly, she was not impressed by the movie, but I liked it very much. So, um, This one I'm surprised I don't have on DVD yet because I like this movie very much. This was a very well done movie. Um, Alex Aja and Gregory Lavasor, very good filmmaking team. So check it out if you haven't seen it yet, P2. And I'm going to do one more film and see, if what, see what I can find here. Here we go. 30 Days a Night, um, the most terrifying vampire movie I've seen in a long time. Of course, this is produced by uh, Sam Raimi and Robert Tappert and is directed by uh, David Slade and co-written by Brian Nelson. Uh, little known fact, uh, David Slade and Brian Nelson uh, previously teamed up before this film on a little independent thriller called Hard Candy, which stars Ellen Page and Patrick Wilson, which was a neat little psychological thriller and this was the next collaboration they did together 30 days a night which was based on the graphic novel by steve niles which who also co-wrote the film oh my god this movie scared the shit out of me no film has ever done that in a long time i was literally jumping out of my seat on in the theater especially the head vampire um marlo played by danny houston very chilling Especially the one scene where he's about to bite this lady and, please, God. And then he's just looking at her and just like, God? No, God. Man, that just chilled me to the core and had some great gore scenes. The vampires were just, just flat out scary as hell. And there's this one with the big bug eyes and the big teeth, who the bald-headed one. If you guys seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the one that had the big eyes and the big teeth just look scary as all hell um i've rented this film a few times i'm gonna own this because i love this movie 30 days a night one of the best vampire films i've seen in a long time and the most terrifying um go check it out and that's it for this part um i'll probably do a part five sometime and until then i will talk to you guys later and i'll see you guys when i do part five take care